For the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna walk you step by step through how to sculpt these helmets and explain the three main steps of building it. I'll also share with you all the brushes and alphas I used, completely free, and you won't need to buy anything. So let's jump right into the first stage. Always start with a base mesh or whether object your model is going to sit on. For example, if you're creating a mask, make sure to bring with a head form so you can sculpt on top of it, reshape the face, and bring it closer to the shape of the mask. I always keep my references open a second monitor for this step and at this stage my only goal is to bring the head form closer to the final object then by masking parts of the mesh I can extract them in other words I'm creating a rough base mesh in the shape of the mask so I can reach the desired form much faster this method saves me a lot of time because after extracting I can refine the shape adjust the edges and build a rough silhouette of the object there is no need to spend too much time here trying to make everything perfect or fully accurate. Also some artists prefer to clean the edges and push the shape perfectly at this stage and that's totally fine. Everyone has their own approach. Personally I prefer to first mask and then extract and finally clean the edges with zero measure because it's easier and give me a cleaner result. With clean, lower topology it's much simpler to refine the form and edges of course. At this point I only try to keep it close to the concept. For example, I want to transition the form from a head into helmets and what really matter here is just the primary shapes. You don't need to worry about details at all and there is no need to use any special brushes. Just simple ones like move, standard and few basics you know. And as you can see I'm also creating the belt using the strap brush. One trick you can use to make the belt perfectly straight and clean is this. After creating it, use polygroup by normals to turn the shape edges into separate polygroups and then use polish by futures to smooth out and clean those edges and now you have a clean form of the belt and again at this stage the only thing you really need to do is block out the main objects with rough shapes so when you look at the model you can see that is starting to resemble the concept that's the whole purpose of this step i don't think too much about secondary forms here the goal is just to build the main objects and place them together with approximate shapes so you can check proportions and the overall feel. Don't overthink it, just build something that gives you a starting point. Before we move on to the next stage, I should mention this. If you are struggling with the cost of training in this field or can't afford to buy all the courses you need to grow, Flipped Normals has done something really generous. They've put together all 13 ZBrush and Blender sculpting courses from beginner to advanced worth over $600 and are offering them for just $30. They're not not sponsoring me to say this but I'm only sharing it because I've been active there for years and have learned a lot from them so I wanted to introduce it to you as well if you're interested I've placed the direct link under the video now that you have the rough shape of each object it's time to go into each one and refine the smaller forms in the concept I'm working from by Jun Mo Kim the mask has some holes like the eyes opening and a few other shapes. First I use polypaint to mark their position and shape with black color. Then I mask those areas and delete it. For this process it's better to have a slightly higher polygon density so the masking works more accurately. Afterward you can adjust the faces to improve the form. Finally I can use zero measure to get a cleaner mesh and it doesn't need to stay super low poly. I also use polish by futures to straight and sharpen the lines. The idea is to create these holes before extruding the models so that I end up with clean topology. This way, when I give thickness to the mesh, it produces nice sharp edges. Before using panel loops, make sure the polish option is turned off. Otherwise, your mesh will get too soft and you will lose the main shapes. At this stage, you can use Z-Modeler to extrude the edges and get a clean, precise shape. If you need any extrusion or bevels on the edges, do them here because once the mesh is subdivided, you won't be able to go back and add those. So the process is simple. First, build a rough version of your model using masking or any other method. Then create topology with evenly distributed edges and finally give it thickness or extrude where needed. One big advantage of extruding the edges cleanly like this is that you won't need to drag the edges manually with brushes. I mean or brush or anything like that. I see a lot of people doing that and it's really not necessary to spend your time on it. 
For the back of the eyes and other open areas, I need a black mesh that looks completely dark and halo for now. So I place a close mesh behind it, which I can delete it later. You'll also notice I'm creating vertical polygroups on the close because later I want to easily mask certain areas and use ZBrush dynamic close method to simulate pressure and wrinkles. This step is not necessary. You can also just mask manually. I also extrude the edges and assign it to a separate polygroup so it keeps a clean and sharp shape. If the edges become too soft after subdividing, you can add supporting edges in the important areas. Overall, at this stage, your main focus should be on building clean topology, extruding the edges, and keeping the forms sharp and accurate. This stage is extremely important because without clean topology, you won't be able to add any real detail or achieve quality in your model later on. So don't work on dynamic meshes. For the belt, I delete the thickness and keep only the other polygroups because I want to adjust its shape. For the buckle, I use my free pack of 40 buckles that I had previously created. The link is under the video. It's completely free and anyone can download and use it in their projects. Anyway, I split the belt into two parts by deleting one face at the back of the buckle because I want it to look more dynamic and not look a single you know and also wanted to match the reference a bit more if you use polish by futures at this stage you'll notice the belt edges get a curved effect just remember to add one or more supporting edges throughout the middle so the curve is smoother finally i use panel loops to give the belt the needed thickness for this case, I also applied a bevel so it matches the real leather belts more closely. If the edges become so soft after subdividing, you can undo and add more supporting edges along the main borders. I do this step a lot, subdividing the meshes to check the results, then undo it to make adjustment and refine it further. Now we move into the detailing stage. This is where you add fine forms and sharp details that make the model look more realistic. I always mean by giving the model some random shapes and surface damages using brushes like Trim Dynamic, Move or Clay Buildup, for example, broken or chipped edges. I also create bigger cracks and dents by masking part of the mesh before going into very fine details. To make things look more natural, you can also push the edges out for a slider with damage standard or any other sharp brush. The key idea is, before you add micro details, make your model look natural first. Add scratches or imperfections because this is an old armor and it wouldn't realistically look perfectly smooth and flawless. With clay buildup, you can also create larger, softer indentations on the surface. You don't need special brushes for the smallest stone like noise I'm using here. I rely on the free or brush pack which is available to everyone. I will share the link so you can use it. It's perfect for adding the necessary details for metal, stone, armor, or anything with a similar surface. The sharp lines from the concept can also be added with the orb brush or any hard surface line, or you can use a slash tool, which is free in ZBrush. Another tip, once you create a line or detail, if you feel it's not sharp or intense enough, you can press 1 again to repeat the last stroke. Just make sure not to move the camera. For pins, you can use the free IMM brushes inside ZBrush, which include many different objects. While dragging, hold Ctrl to make the pins consistent in size. It depends on your brush size, which you can adjust later. Separate them from mesh and use the move brush to reposition them so they fit on the surface. Another thing I usually do is I use a slash 3 on the edges to create the small chips and damages. There are many ways to do this, but since my concept is old and weathered, I like giving the model that destroyed age look. Slash 3 is excellent for creating tears, and not only on metal, it works on leather, close stone, and more depending on how you use it. You can even create a small scratches on the model or belt. It all depends on how you drag the brush. Next, I move on the leather around the neck. I adjust the polygroups a bit to increase the spacing and make them larger. A great way to add volume and separate the patterns is to use ZBrush dynamic close system with inflate and expand. Just make sure to turn off gravity and keep the values very low, something like 0.1 volts, but you will need to test it. Finally, you can use the free stitch brushes I've provided into the project file to add seams between the patterns, making them look more natural and deeper. I also recommend manually reinforcing the folds a little to make them stronger and you know, more natural. 
Then I move on to the belts. The first thing I do is use a stand-up brush to add overall forms that make it look stretched, giving it a more random natural appearance. For the part where the buckle pierces through the belt, I tear it open with a slash, which make it look more believable. You know, old belts were handmade and didn't always follow straight forms or standards. Also, you could model the hole directly, but in this case, I didn't want to do that. Next, I add the edge and surface details the leather needs with the slash brushes again. You can also use the leather noise alpha I shared in previous video to add random noise evenly across the surface. For the edges I mask them and use the noise option in deformation to add subtle noise. Then by using layers I reduce the intensity until it matches the look I want. And I repeated the exact same workflow for the second belt piece. I start with overall form using a standard, creating the tears with a slash and finally add noise to bring it closer to the desired look. Finally, I move on to the back part of the helmet. The process is exactly the same as the front. Nothing complicated here. And if you made it this far into the video, I can guess you'll find this content interesting and hopefully it's answered some of your questions. Personally, I hate starting my videos with saying like and subscribe, you know, without giving any real value to the audience first. So instead, I'd love to hear your feedback. Tell me in the comments what the strengths and weaknesses of this teaching style are. And if you have any questions about the workflow or anything related, make sure to ask. I've also recently created a community on Telegram where I share my daily work. Every day I try to post valuable contents about goal settings, planning, insights about the markets, and many other useful things. If you're interested, I've shared the link under the video. I'm sure it can help you stay motivated and move faster toward your goals. And I truly hope that this tutorial and the resources I've shared with you have been helpful. And as always, create something that you're proud of.